when, when you talk about infrastructure in Africa, I think the IMF estimated about $93 billion, and there is a financing gap uh, about $25, $30 billion per year to finance infrastructure. What we need is, is to get to have alternative financing. We, are, we absolutely need uh, alternative financing, and for that we also need uh, the regulator to play its part at all levels. But, uh, I mean, to, to be fair to the regulator, they, they, they try to be a bit more progressive now, but they, there's still a lot to do. When you look, for example, uh, you, you look at BIVM today, because that, that's another way to raise money. But today, if you want to list your company, uh, uh, BIVM, they will ask you to have about 100% collateral of whatever amount you want to list. Which means when you go to a bank and ask them to, to provide you with a letter of credit for that, it costs you 2%. That's too penalty. You know, there, there's no point doing, doing that operation anymore. So the regulator needs to, to play its part. Uh, when we, when we, 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 one, one way to provide alternative financing is through securitization. But this, again, uh, uh, that need to be, to, the process need to be a bit uh, uh, cleaned up. Because the fees associated with, with securitization, at least in West Africa, are also too punitive. You're talking about, you know, all, all over 2%. And that's a lot of money when, when, when you know that uh, 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 the interest rates are, are already uh, high, high enough. But there, there is also something, I mean, for government, there is, uh, there is what we try to, uh, one thing that we try to develop that's called European assets. For, uh, how, how does that work? Let's say you want to, to, to build a road. Look at existing road. Or try to monetize assets that are already existing. Uh, uh, having a, how much is it here? Toll gates. Uh, uh, let, let's say. You, 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 take the, you, you take Benin, for example. We have a lot of roads that, that, are, fun, that are fine, like going to Boyko, going to... We should be willing to pay for using those roads. And all the government has to do is to, to add toll gates. And you, then you use that money to finance other roads. Otherwise, there is, there is, I mean, there, there is no magic. You know, uh, there is one thing to complain that oh, there is no infrastructure, but we, we, we our, our, our tax rate is, is, is actually very low. We are, we are around 14, 15 percent. That's very low. We, we need to be willing, you know, to, to, to have it increased, to, you know, 20, 20, 25 percent to use that money to try to finance infrastructure as well. Because that money has to come from somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I have two perspectives from the macro, macro side of it. Uh, from your presentation, I hear clearly that there is no problem in terms of financing the private sector. That's, I, I fully agree with you that in West Africa in general, the problem that we face is not the problem of credit, it's the problem of good project. And I do agree with you that the private bank will not fund any project if the probability of getting repaid is low. So I understand that one. But the problem that we have, I'm happy to be close to the guy of international funds, I mean the fund managers. I want to ask you a question. What are the sectors that are profitable in which people could invest. Because I can see five years ago or five years ago we were, we were saying that Africa is, is rising again. Nobody is no longer talking about that and they, we are lowering our expectation as uh, you said it in a minute in the sense that the growth rate that we have in us per capita is not high enough. 5% minus 3% is 2% is not something that is able to create wealth quickly. And then the question is, I'm asking you as the people on the ground, what are the sectors in which people could invest? And you say that the projects that are presented to you are not necessarily the, the good one. 
So in Benin, for example, here, what are the sectors in which... Yes, I mean, we both, both of you. Yeah. I'm actually a very optimist. So when you ask me what project, uh, in what you should invest, I will tell you everything. You know, uh, what we call the advantage of backwardation is we, have, we, are, we, we are lagging so much behind that everything has to be done. And everything has to be done, you don't have to reinvent it. You just have to see what's been done and do it. But the problem we have here is we love shortcuts. We just love shortcuts. We, we don't like to do the work like it would be done anywhere else. You know, uh, I, I was actually talking to, to Luke earlier and talking about a company. A company in, I think, around 2007, they were making about $2 billion in revenue. I mean, that's a lot. That was a lot of money. They were, it's a company that was uh, producing yogurt and, and, and water. They, they were making two billion in revenue. And they had, I mean, once you start reaching a certain level, you know, people come and, and get interested in you. So you had a European company that came to him and said, oh, uh, you know, we're singing. And I'm talking about you know, something that happened almost 10 years ago. They came to him and they tried to invest in capital because this is something that we, we, we haven't really discussed here. Uh, one thing that our economy is lacking is investment in capital. You know, the first five years of, uh, of a new company are always very critical. So you, you, you don't need to, to, what you need is investment in capital and not in debt. But to go back to, the, to, 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 the, to that man, the company came to him and they wanted to, to buy part of his company. The guy wanted, and that's another problem that we have. The guy wanted to act proud and say, no, 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 I don't want to sell my company. If you want to lend me money, lend me money, but I will not let you uh, have part of my company. Today, that company is completely bankrupt. Why? Because...
Uh, I don't know uh, uh, an investor who have a power plant and say, okay, I'm losing money. I don't know this kind of uh, situation. So um, I think that there's a lot of possibilities. The fact is that uh, being compliant is, however, I think a problem. Thank you very much. So we have the time for one or two questions for the audience before we turn up the The problem that we have is that uh, uh, our bank are not strong, right? Our bank are weak. So the natural question is how do we make them stronger, right? And then the second question is uh, maybe related. So is it, is it possible to come together as a financial institution and build some kind of, uh, I don't know, a system of credit tracking or credit history where it can help you know understand the credit worthiness of customers and possibly improve their financial you know access to credit their access to credit right and I'm just speculating but we are the actors of the financial sector so that's something I'd like to hear yeah. about. Yeah please uh, wait I and uh, rating rating agency has started. When you look, I mean, this, and this is for the formal segment. Uh, in Africa today, we have about, I think, four companies. I think Augusto in uh, Nigeria, CCO in South Africa, Wara in Senegal, and Bloomsfield in, uh, in Ivory Coast. Uh, Bloomfield and Wara being a bit West African. But unfortunately, uh, and that's, that's still a an issue that we have, the credit is not valued properly. And re, 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 even our banks, I'm not even sure if, if they look at, uh, I mean, uh, look my, my answer to this question, yeah. but you, you, you take someone like, uh, I mean, maybe Benin, it's not uh, uh, good at it. If I, if I look at Nigeria today, you have someone like Dangote, I mean, Dangote is probably the best rating you can have in Nigeria. I mean, one reason being, you know, he's all over the news, he's the richest man, so people expect him to pay. But when you, 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 you start going down, there is no such difference between uh, 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 someone who will be... I mean, what difference the banks made for two people to whom they, they, they borrow, they lend, they lend money at eight, nine percent. So this is something that needs to come a, a, a bit more. People need to get used to it a, a bit more and appreciate what is a, what the rating is. But again, even those no, uh, rating agency are, are still are still relatively new. But it's something that needs to be used, you know, a, a lot more. And that's for the formal segment. What you have also uh, uh, on the low income basis. You, 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 you have agencies now that are being created that try to track people rating through, through the, the use of their mobile phone. And that's also a very innovative way that is being used to actually allow people to, to, to access credit through, through, through their mobile phone. So you, you see that a lot in, uh, in, uh, in, in Kenya, in East Africa, and hopefully that practice will, will be able to come to, uh, uh, to, to, to come to to, to, to our part of the world. I know I've been discussing with the CEO of MTN, for example. I know they, they just been issued the electronic money issuer. And one of the objectives is to be able to, to get credit, credit rating, have a credit scoring uh, uh, tool through, through, through mobile phone. But these are questions that are very much in actuality. Thank you. Uh, just for, for the second question first, um, I think that credit rating could be very useful for uh, loans to individuals. Uh, but the problem is that out of uh, 1,400 billion uh, of loans in Benin, you have only 300 uh, to individuals. And uh, a number of them are to uh, state agents, so no risk, basically. So um, the fact is that the NPL problem of 
uh, the banking sector is not about individuals. I think that uh, we, we have had uh, um, credit uh, bureau reform by central bank. I think that the, the um, yeah, IMF is very happy. That's good. Uh, it can't be negative, obviously, but really, you know, um, we know who is who in the country. Banks have records, and if you uh, don't know someone, you call another f friend in another bank, and you will know about him. The fact is that a number of banks, uh, you know, since there is f few uh, uh, um, bankable projects, are lending money again to um, poor uh, companies or companies that have already um, defaulted on the past. But yeah, everybody uh, can have a second chance, but sometimes it's better in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth uh, chance, and so again. So I think that uh, obviously uh, it's useful for individuals, it can be useful for um, Small companies, even if people, entrepreneurs, are changing their companies every six months. I've seen this. So in this case, it's useless. But uh, it, it won't solve the, the, the largest problem, uh, which is about yeah, mainly guarantee problem, how to save guarantees, uh, and how to rely on good documents. Uh, really. You know, the fact is that uh, most business plans are totally irrealistic, most accounts are totally false, and uh, we are taking decisions on close to nothing, and mostly if they are friends. Uh, I exaggerate, every bank, and especially Societe Generale, we have very uh, uh, sold credit process, etc. But the fact is that at the beginning, the data we have we are not always comfortable with this data. And even with Dangote and a number of companies in the Nigerian stock exchange, it's a big problem. For the first thing, how could you have stronger banks? Um, more capital and just, uh, you know, the problem is currently that the, 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 um, the central bank over the last 20 years I've tried by every means to avoid bankruptcy of a bank. You know, if you remember, what is the latest bank to have been bankrupt? And in West Africa, you don't have so many examples. You have to look at Coffee Bar in Ivory Coast, but it was very small. Uh, and you have very uh, few banks that are going bankrupt. IB here, uh, very small banks. So uh, I think that the regulator uh, is still uh, seeking his way to uh, uh, make uh, the truth happen. We have a number of banks uh, currently that are not um, that could encompass problems. I, 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 could, I can't say more, but uh, it's regulatory issues. It's about concentration. But the recent uh, the move of 2010, 2012, saying we, we have to increase capital, is that uh, all banks have increased capital. So uh, it's back to uh, the, the, the beginning. So now we have a Basel III, a Basel-like uh, reform. By the way, uh, uh, any uh, equity is required against uh, Debt, public debt. Uh, and when we see what has happened in Europe, uh, it's just uh, a big love. Uh, I think that this reform could lead to, uh, yeah, um, a number of issues for a number of banks, and then perhaps we could have concentration or capital strengthening. And but we don't have to avoid that some banks are systemic. And even in Benin, some of yeah, uh, the, the top 10 banks are systemic. So it could be a very, very good problem. And any government has, uh, uh, is willing to have a bank crisis. So the fact is that all factors are uh, uh, 
are for the statu quo, you know, and that's a problem. Just, just, just to add to, to that point, actually, I think, uh, if you ask me, uh, I, I think the, the best thing to consolidate, okay, uh, it's just unacceptable that you have small banks that can't actually do too much. They need to consolidate that one thing, and if they don't want to do it, uh, and that goes back to my first presentation, I think technology and the, the, the rise of financial technology uh, will, will oblige them either to disappear or to consolidate. Because the model, the current model they are under is not sustainable. Okay? So they, they will have to. So the, the earlier the earlier they, they, they get on with the program, uh, the, the earlier for them it, it will work. Because what, what the banks do today is I'm collecting cash and then I'm trying, I'm collecting at, let's say 5% and I'm lending at, at, at 7%. That's it. You know, uh, there, is, there is not much thinking behind, and that model is just not sustainable. Okay, so because one, you, you, what you have, you start having uh, more digitalized banks, uh, uh, the, 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 the cost will be much lower, they will be able to, to, uh, to, to lower the, the to, they will be able to lower the cost, and those banks will not be, those, those, and because the population is very price sensitive, you know, the, the first bank who is able to, to offer rates at, at, at 4% to the population here, they will get everybody. The other will not be able to compete, they will disappear, full stop. So the earlier they get on with that program, the better it will be for them. But my, my guess is uh, the, the banking landscape will change for them and will change a lot in the next 5 to 10 years. Thanks. Wow. Thanks, brothers. We'll be able to get a lot of information and insight from your presentation. One of the two things that I really learned is from your presentation is that you are able to help firms to think about bankable projects. And this is what we should be doing here. This is, should be one of the complex advantages of a business school like this, especially given that our business school Bonsoir, je suis Ahmed Aguemont et je suis euh, membre, j'ai récemment rejoint le conseil d'administration de ASE. Euh, le titre, c'était vraiment surtout sur, le finance, euh, sur la finance et le développement, mais notamment mon exposé portait sur l'inclusion financière à partir, à partir de, de la nouvelle technologie. Et cela, notamment ce qu'on qu appelle communément la fintech, pour permettre euh, l'accès à tous et à toutes au, à, à, à des produits financiers. Merci. Non, non, j'ai fini. Ok, donc comme je disais, mon exposé était sur la finance inclusive et, et notamment l'utilisation des nouvelles technologies pour permettre euh, aux, aux banques, aux secteurs financiers de pouvoir atteindre, atteindre toutes les populations, même les plus pauvres, étant donné, étant donné les coûts beaucoup plus faibles des transactions euh, associés avec l'économie avec digitale aujourd'hui. Donc je pense que... Euh, c'est un moyen qui, qui devrait être mis en œuvre et être utilisé pour mobiliser euh, l'épargne publique et ensuite derrière pouvoir, euh, pouvoir accéder à des transactions de plus grosse envergure. Bon, déjà, je suis membre de, membre de, de l'administration de l'ASE, donc je reste disponible à, à tous les étudiants de l'ASE qui peuvent me, me, me joindre à, à, à tout moment et, et on peut en discuter, et je pourrais en discuter avec eux. Mais je pense que la, la réalité aujourd'hui, c'est qu'il qu faut qu'on puisse pouvoir utiliser les atouts que nous avons, notamment la, la FinTech. Euh, par lequel, euh, sur lequel l'Afrique aujourd'hui est numéro un au monde pour pouvoir euh, financer notre développement.
Qu'est-ce que je pense avoir inculqué Ce que je pense avoir transmis, c'est vraiment que nous, nous, nous avons énormément de moyens euh, à, à, à notre disposition. Nous avons le capital humain, nous avons l'épargne qui est disponible. Après, il suffit, il, il suffit vraiment de, de pouvoir mettre les deux ensemble pour pouvoir, euh, comme je dis, financer notre, notre développement. Et tout est possible ici. Tout est possible parce que les gens pensent, lorsqu'on pense finance, on pense toujours à ces gros montants ou à, ces, euh, à, à, à des choses qui viennent de l'au-delà, lorsque nous avons tout ici en fait. Euh, je, je suis très fier d'être ici, je suis très fier d'être avec la SE et, et c'est la raison pour laquelle j'ai accepté avec, avec, avec plaisir de faire partie du conseil d'administration parce que l'initiative portée par la SE ici est, 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 est énorme. Et ce, ce qu'on a besoin dans nos pays, c'est vraiment euh, la capacité de pouvoir mener à, à des projets à bien avec des standards internationaux. Comme vous le savez, l'ASC est affiliée à Princeton, qui est ce qu'on appelle Ivy League. Et, et, et aujourd'hui, ils sont capables de transmettre cette formation aux étudiants du Bénin, mais aussi de la sous-région. Et ça, je pense que c'est quelque chose de magnifique qu'il faut que nous encourageons complètement. Parce que si nous pouvons faire cette formation là sur place, pourquoi est-ce est qu'il faut aller voyager aux États-Unis, en France et tout ça Et je pense que c'est une très bonne initiative qu'il faut multiplier sur, sur d'autres secteurs aussi. Merci, c'est moi. Bonsoir. Donc je suis Luc Morio. Je travaille dans le secteur financier ouest africain depuis une dizaine d'années dans pour un, un gestionnaire de fonds d'investissement tout d'abord, puis en tant que euh, dirigeant euh, d'institutions financières. Et euh, je travaille actuellement à la Société Générale, où je suis membre du comité de direction. Donc euh, le, le titre était euh, « Finance et développement ». Euh, J'ai essayé de délivrer quelques euh, pensées sur ce sujet-là et notamment euh, la première d'entre elles était la question de la liquidité, l'importance de la liquidité, de la rareté de la euh, liquidité euh, dans nos pays euh, face aux actions, à l'effet d'éviction euh, de l'État, au taux d'intérêt, etc. Donc ça, c'était vraiment le, le premier sujet et euh, ensuite, on a eu euh, plusieurs discussions euh, plusieurs, euh, au cours de cet exposé sur... Euh, des modes de financement alternatifs tels que euh, la captation des dépôts par la technologie, la titrisation. Euh, voilà, et, et j'ai conclu, euh, conclu, euh, conclu l'exposé euh, sur le fait que euh, on devait euh, aussi peut-être un petit peu relativiser euh, ce sujet-là et euh, travailler sur l'autofinancement. Euh, et travailler sur les réformes de structure qu'on doit faire pour permettre qu'il y ait plus de financement. Je, je pense que euh, l'exposé, j'ai essayé d'apporter quelques informations concrètes sur le marché, sur les, les tendances des acteurs économiques et sur les contraintes. Et j'espère que, je dirais, ces, ces données issues du monde réel vont servir aux étudiants pour mieux construire leurs pensées pratiques et théoriques. Tu es ravi d'être invité par, par l'African School of Economics. Je pense qu'on a besoin de leaders bien au fait des réalités, avec très bonne base théorique et... Je pense que l'ASE est de nature à encourager je dirais, cette croissance du capital humain. Merci à vous. Euh, comment ça se passe Vous posez des questions ou je parle Je vais vous poser une question. Vous allez vous présenter. Vous allez vous présenter. Oui. Après, je vais vous demander le titre de l'exposé. Vous allez donner une synthèse de l'exposé. Les avantages que cela pourrait avoir sur ces documents que nous avons suivis, et à quoi ça va nous dire un mot sur la réseau. Ok. En anglais ou en français En français. En français. Oui. En français. Hein. Oui. Vous êtes à l'aise en français Non. Oui.
N'importe. Je ne sais pas. Ce que vous voulez. Je ne sais pas. C'est vous qui dites euh, en français. En français. Okay. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Présentez-vous. Alors, je suis Kawakos. Je suis professeur assistant à l'African School of Economics. Euh, professeur assistant en finance. Oui. Voilà, alors donc c'était un, un petit panel donc, euh, sur euh, la finance et le développement. Donc grosso modo c'est alors comment est-ce que euh, euh, comment est-ce qu'on pourrait donc euh, améliorer euh, euh, le, le financement donc, de nos économies, qui sont les économies en développement. Quels sont les problèmes donc, qui sont rencontrés au niveau financement. Donc, dans ce sens, nous parlons du financement des infrastructures, du financement du secteur privé, euh, comment pouvoir collecter l'épargne publique et l'épargne privée, ce que nous appelons euh, euh, l'épargne des ménages. Et donc, euh, ce, ce, quelques points euh, ont été euh, couverts lors de ce panel. Oui. Quel champ de financement pourrait être utilisé euh, Actuellement, donc, il euh, y, a, y a toutes sortes de, de, de facteurs donc, qui peuvent euh, euh, ou qui ont un impact sur l'économie. Donc, euh, autant bien le financement des infrastructures que le financement donc, du secteur privé. Euh, dans ce sens, en fait, il est plus important donc, de voir quels sont les goulots euh, qui forment des freins donc, euh, à ces différents secteurs-là, à ces différents secteurs de financement. Donc, euh, en fait, euh, nous, nous avons donc reçu deux, deux panélistes qui sont des, des experts du, du secteur, euh, donc qui nous ont donné leur point de vue au niveau pratique. Et nous pensons que ceci est très important pour nos étudiants, surtout nos étudiants de MBA, qui euh, pourront avoir en plus d'une vision théorique, donc euh, une vision pratique de la chose. Et euh, de, tels, euh, de tels événements donc, sont souhaités à l'avenir pour leur permettre euh, de, 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 euh, de s'améliorer, disons, dans leurs différentes euh, perspectives. Euh, donc, euh, je remercie donc tout euh, euh, le personnel donc, qui, qui s'est battu pour euh, euh, que cet événement euh, soit une réussite. Et euh, ben, donc, au niveau de l'ASE, voilà, nous essayons quand même de, de, de vrai à ce que euh, nos formations donc, soit qu'on allie, disons, la pratique et la théorie, ou qu'on allie le point de vue pratique et le point de vue théorique, hein, afin que nos étudiants puissent être formés d'une façon globale, d'une façon euh, au standard international. Merci. Merci. Merci.